join us and discover beautiful beaches, rugged landscapes, pretty towns, desolate mountain ranges that sweep down to stunning lakes, unique architecture, history and folklore, no shamrocks, no shillelaghs and definitely no shenanigans, just make it Ireland. Today I'm in Cork City and visiting the spectacular 17th century fortification known as Elizabeth Fort and named after Britain's Queen Elizabeth I. It's a place that's borne witness to much of Ireland's political turbulence and violent past. To an extent, you can follow Ireland's history by understanding the history of the fort. These lads here give you some indication of the primitive warfare that these walls have seen. Now here's one place you wouldn't have wanted to find yourself in, in days gone by. Since 2014, the fort's been open as a tourist attraction, and so now we can enjoy this impressive building from the inside at last. And you can see a couple of people here making sure it's in tip-top condition for your visit. It's now used for a number of events, as you can see from the stage in here, and these include the Cork Midsummer Festival, Cork Heritage Open Day, Culture Week, Culture Night, the Cork St Patrick's Festival, and the 2015 Finbars Festival. But as well as seeing all that's inside this impressive structure, it's great as well to be able to see the viewpoint it commands over the city. After all, that was its advantage when it was a place of strategic military significance. Now look at that. The fort was originally constructed right at the start of the 17th century, in 1601, in a response to landings of the Spanish Armada in Conceal, the purpose of which was for the Spanish to unite with Irish rebels and join forces in a common cause against the English. This initiative failed and Elizabeth Fort in Cork was a means of guarding against future rebel insurrections and foreign incursions. That's the spires of St Finbar's Cathedral you can see just behind the house in the inner courtyard. We're now going down to a part of the fort that was constructed as an air raid shelter during the Second World War in case of bombing. And so you can see that the history of the fort spans conflict across the ages. Shortly after the Conceal incident, and prompted by the death of Elizabeth I in 1603, the fort was attacked by 800 rebels in Cork, but again this insurrection was brought under control by British reinforcements, and to add insult to injury, the British forced the people of Cork to pay for the repair of the fort. So what we see today is the star-shaped fort that was part of the reconstruction between 1624 and 1626, much of which survives. And we can see the courtyard now, with its staging, and its groups of foreign tourists. Between 1817 and 1837, the fort was used as a deportation centre for convicts, and as many as 250 prisoners at a time would have been held here, awaiting for the arrival of ships to take them to penal colonies in New South Wales and various other British territories. It was mostly female prisoners that were held here. And as we enter the exhibition centre that focuses on these detainees, if you look up, you can see the place where the old Garda Siakana sign was, when this place functioned as a police station between 1929 and right up to 2013. This is a really interesting exhibition space, which focuses on the history of the fort, with lots of maps and artists' impressions, that give us some idea of how not just the fort, but Cork has developed. And the main thrust of the exhibition is on the women who were deported. If you're watching from Australia now, this is likely your ancestor's last stop before arriving in Oz. The place still looks like a police station though. Ireland's most hated historical figure, Oliver Cromwell, ordered further improvements to the defences in 1649 and 1650. 
So with all this construction of defences, they were finally put to use during the Williamite Wars of 1690. Elizabeth Fort and what was then the walled city of Cork were held by Jacobite forces loyal to the Catholic King James. King William of Orange besieged the city and after a week of bombardment, the fort was surrendered. Imagine the barbarity of these wars and what these walls would be able to tell us if they could talk. Let's take a pause from all this just for a second so that I can remind you to give the video a like if it's been interesting or informative and please think about subscribing. Many of you regularly watch Naked Ireland videos without hitting the subscribe button and it's great to have you here but think about subscribing, it really helps build the channel and you can even hit the bell icon if you want to get an alert the next time I upload a video. Sure if you're busy or if you're not in the mood when you get an alert you can just ignore it. In the 18th century, in 1719, the fort became an army barracks, with soldiers accommodation being built inside. But in the century afterwards, a new barracks in the north of the city meant that the barracks in Elizabeth Fort was no longer necessary. And there's St Finbar's again. I'll be doing a separate video on that really interesting cathedral. This all reminds me a little bit of Derry, having the housing so close to the ancient walls. By 1845, the fort had become a Royal Irish Constabulary Station and was being used as a food depot, addressing widespread starvation during the Great Famine. And in the last century, the fort was a billet for the notorious Black and Tans during the Irish War of Independence. And during the Irish Civil War which followed, the fort was held by anti-treaty forces and on their retreat they burned the buildings within the fort. This means that the buildings you see within the fort today all date from the 1920s onwards. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I've already liked the film and subscribed to the channel, but I'd love to support Naked Ireland further. Help it grow. Well you can. I have a scheme where you can offer a donation by buying me a pint. Just go to the description below and you'll find a link in the second paragraph that takes you to the donation page. All donations are gratefully received, large and small. And this is the back of the 20th century police station. And this guy looks bored stiff. I'm guessing given all the weapons and the casks of powder around him that he'd have been a quartermaster. flag hoisted here. That's never a bad thing in my opinion. Onwards and upwards. Now I did say that there were great views of the city to be had from up here. And you can imagine cannonballs raining down on you below during the various periods of conflict. Thankfully nowadays, this is a place from which you can appreciate Cork City and peacefully contemplate its past. even if it is horrific.
If history has taught us anything, it's that it's good to keep a calm head on your shoulders. And on that somewhat macabre note, I'll bid you farewell until the next Naked Ireland video.